Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Smart Tank Revolution, where we always, and I mean always, kick out at two. I am your host, flying solo today, the benevolent, intelligent, excellent, and eloquent Mr. Donnie Wonderful. And I will be putting on my uh, Siskel and Ebert hat. And I wonder if that actually dates me. I don't think they have a show anymore. I really don't. But the the film critics, but I'm going to be the documentary critic today. Because I just finished watching Mr. McMahon. Oh, gee. Man, man, man. I'm going to try to keep this tangent, tangent at least under 20 minutes. But if I go over, forgive me. I'm let y'all know this right now. <laughs> six episodes um six episodes goodness gracious oh by the way um i've been away on vacation that's why you haven't heard much about much from me rather you heard about me shout out to my uh esteemed colleague mr joey business who provided some excellent excellent insight to uh to to the uh monday night raws the smackdown some excellent content there he basically carried the channel over the last four weeks shout out to mr joey business absolutely loved listening to all of your videos I look forward to more of your dynamite diatribes the raw rebuttals and even um you know i guess whatever you can pull from smackdown <laughs> but um but nevertheless, I'm back on the mic. You know, I was in South Beach. I was in Orlando. You know, let's get some sunshine, you know? you know, enjoying the Florida sun. But now that I'm, I've worked on my tan, I'm back in the office and I'm recording for you all and our Smart Tank family, our faithful supporters. We love you all. So now, this Mr. McMahon, um, six episodes, spoiler alerts. I'm probably going to go over something. I have no idea what I'm going to say because this is all freestyled, unedited, off the cuff, as we always do. Um, Season one, I guess. And if there's a season two to this, and shout out to Bill Simmons, uh, uh, executive producer. Shout out to you. If there is a season two, it will definitely have to be. Uh, we're living in it now, I want to say, because, um, you know, the aftermath of these sex scandals, we're, I would love for more insight to be on that. Not not to, you know, poke at a, a wound that's already open, but, you know, there's just so much more here. Um, Vince McMahon, Vincent Kennedy McMahon and the character Mr. McMahon, Vince says that they're completely different. And one thing I love about this whole entire series, and which I found comical, was how it was edited. So Vince says there's no difference. Hogan says they're the same. Bruce Pritchard say, yeah, no, that's the, they're the same. <laughs> Shawn Michaels says there's little differences, and they're, and they're and they're spliced one after the other. And it's not the only time that they did that. Oh man, it's, oh God. <laughs> I'm telling you, like watching these episodes, I got a little bit of everything. I was intrigued. Uh, by the time it got to episode three with Screwjob, I uh, I was laughing. You know, I've learned a couple of couple of things that I forgot about, but none about the actual man himself. And what I can say is, from watching all of these, the way that they opened or ended. I want to say no, no, no. The way that they opened um, um, episode six, right? The finish. That little excerpt where they said um, where Vince was talking about, uh, I guess, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, um, the things that go on in his head and there's different levels, and that the last one uh, was was sexual, and he's not on episode six because that's when he stopped uh, being interviewed because. The sexual scandal stuff went public again. The way that they that they that they edited that that went right in, that went into everything that went into episode six, which is the most current the most current news that we have on events right now was one hundred percent golden cinematic masterpiece. I loved it. It just proved the objectivity of what the editors were doing and 
and what this was supposed to be about because we wanted to learn about well me personally i wanted to learn about vince mcmahon the man himself and I forgot that him and Linda were married really young, 16, 17, or 17 and 18, one or the other. Um, I had no idea about the stepfather that used to abuse him. And there, there's hints of even sexual abuse, too. So, like, a lot of that stuff and, and that early trauma, and this is, I guess, from, from birth to 12 years old, a lot of that stuff is kind of makes sense now. You know, like, I can see it now, you know? Um and it, it kind of spilt over and you'll you'll get more of that as you watch these episodes i guess uh spoiler alert because um a lot of these things we've heard before but um in case you haven't um when you're listening to it here with us number one thank you but uh even even though you may know some of these things after i say it or check out it but i give you the spoiler alert so you still go back and watch it uh, so again, six episodes. It started off with um, with uh, in episode one, you know, it, it it really talks about how Vince establishes himself. It's the family business in episode one, and you know they do a good job with explaining all the territories and where they were, and then he begins to take over and some people think it's true business vince is really black and white he's one of those guys that's legit black and white no gray area and you know he said they were my competition which i found out to be well i found that to be really serendipitous later on um, and I don't remember which episode it was, but essentially Ted Turner, billionaire Ted, was doing the same thing to Vince. And they say it on this, too. Ted Turner was doing the same thing to Vince, what Vince did to all the territories. But the stories changed. And or and if not the story, the um, I, I, I guess the perspective has is, is changed now <laughs> because Ted Turner is a billionaire. But Vince, this is exactly what you did. But we'll get to that. Um, but see, season one, uh, I'm sorry, episode one talks about, you know, it, the humble beginnings, you know, he's following in his father's footsteps, yada, yada, yada. It's it's, it's really, really, really good. Um, enough to make you want to continue the rest. So I give uh, episode one definitely two thumbs up. But when it gets to episode two now, uh, uh, episode two goes into, now this is where I was a fan from. Um, and the, some of the scandals in episode two was where, um, now, now I'm old enough to remember them. I remember the steroid scandal. I, I, I do. I definitely remember that. And I, and I love the commentary, especially from Tony Atlas, who, um, who says it quite cl clearly here he says, uh, Vince never told us to do it. <laughs> we did it ourselves. I mean, uh. Oh, I love Bret on this too. Bret Hart was just straight to the point. That Bret Hart was the gut punch for the first three or four episodes of this thing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a fan. But, um, you know, like the first three episodes, Heavy Hulk Hogan, because yeah, it talks about, you know, the creation of WrestleMania, you know, like... like oh, how Hulk Hogan was the household name. If you didn't know wrestling... If you never watched it, you knew who Hulk Hogan was. So he was essentially uh, the Michael Jordan to professional wrestling in the 80s and mainly, mainly the 80s and early 90s. We'll we'll get we'll give them that. But um, the um, the Ring Boy scandal with with Pat Patterson, uh, man, like I I remember reading that reading about that in Bret Hart's book. And like there was just there was just a lot of this stuff here, man. Like <laughs> there was a lot of this stuff, man. Um uh the referee, the um the other sex scandal. I can't read a I I'm not even gonna try to even remember her name. I apologize. But yeah, there 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 was there was another there was another um uh I guess it was a it was a rape charge or or another sex scandal. Uh, involving the female referee 
And it's just like, wow, you know, all of these things were kind of like swept under the rug, I would say. If we had 24-hour access through social media to all of our favorite superstars and celebrities, if we had that thin the way we have it now, trust and believe a lot of these like that a lot of these things would, would wouldn't have wouldn't have gone unpunished to say because there's a huge paper trail of these things scandal scandal unethical activity it's just ugh. and this is an objective view just looking at it right or or rather a subjective one because you know to say this unethical is definitely an opinion but um, but yeah, man, like at that episode two really just just highlights a lot of that. And if you didn't know it, if you if you're in your if you're in your twenties, this stuff have definitely was before you. But go back and watch it because I remember this man in his thirties. I remember these things, and I remember Vince walking out of the courtroom with the uh with the neck brace, and um, you know, Paul Heyman is great in in his intro to 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 certain segments and you know like he he gives he gives beautiful descriptions um and basically anytime he's on camera uh, i wanted to shout him out here uh episode three is screw job no surprise so i already knew that yeah you know they're, they're gonna go towards montreal but i had no idea about wendy richter no clue but it just seemed like it was something that um that promoters would do. And um, you know, Vince goes on and says, Hey, it's a time honored tradition, or you know, this is this is my belt, you know, you're carrying it for me, or like this this is a story, but you know, this is my property. I'm just gonna take it back. And I understand that as as an owner of a wrestling promotion. But um also as a as a wrestler who you know, they feel like, you know, they take the slams, they take the bumps, you know, they're in the gym working on their physique, working on their craft, you know, they, they have an attachment to their character and how they're presented and, you know, it means something to them. Like, I understand both sides here. And, um, the story goes, you know, Vince says, you know, we want to take the belt off you. Wendy says, no, we're not. And, um, Vince reveals, uh, brilliant philosophy when you think of it. Hey, just just get the match in the ring. We'll take care of it from there. And that's exactly what he did. Um, the fabulous Moolah was the one under the mask. Um, small package, quick count, and you can you can see the the confusion. You can see the pandemonium in the ring after that. So then it goes into you know some 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 more filler material, but then it it goes into Montreal. And I think on on the previous uh, episode where they talk about the transition from Hogan, uh, it, they tried to do the same thing with Lex Luger, you know, the body, the all American, you know, they're kind of similar, uh, but it didn't work. And Bret Hart used one of the best, one of the best analogies, one of the best for anyone that says that this man was terrible in his promo, he's not good on the mic. Just listen to his interviews. Just let this man be honest. He said he's the one that pulled the sword out of the stone for the WWF. And he actually was. <laughs> Brett said, you'll never see, or you you won't find Bret Hart uh, with an underage woman or with, with cocaine in his car. He's like, you know what? That's absolutely right. <laughs> Hart is like, yeah, Brett. Brett, I'm telling you, Brett. Super candid, like you know, he was all business, all business. And uh, one of the editing things that I love that they did when they talked about it, you go, know, I, I I forgot um what the scene was before leading up to it. You go, Shawn Michaels was a dick, <laughs> and then we cut to the Shawn Michaels. You know, I was a prick back then. <laughs> I I just couldn't stop laughing. I mean, this was this was great. This was great. Their coverage of the Montreal Screwjob left out a lot of things, and um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of information on that cutting room floor. But it's already been out. You know, like Bret Hart had creative control, so he didn't have to. Like this is what you gave him, Vince. 
Um, he was offered the 20 year contract that he can no longer afford. So um, they, he definitely, he made it, uh, he made it feasible for Brett to go and see if he can get the deal back with, uh, with WCW and he did. So then they had to take the belt off him. Um, but he just didn't want to do it to Shawn Michaels. And, you know, I, I remember from watching another shoot interview, um, they were in Detroit the, the night before. He said, you could, you could drop it to uh, Austin or somebody before then. But, you know, Brett did say, you know, it, it's been marketed as, as, as the champion. So he didn't want to disappoint the fans. Uh, I guess my question was, well, you know, you all did it in WrestleMania 9, so why just not have HBK just lose and just have Undertaker come out, you know, tell HBK to go in the back, I got this, and give him a choke slam and take the belt off him. You know, like, you all did it for Hogan. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. But, um, yeah, it, 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 go, it goes over that. And um, one of the things that I don't believe and I'm glad the Undertaker, um, because yeah, the Undertaker was there, and the Undertaker said, uh, said basically what happened, um, which aligned more with 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 what Brett said. They locked up first, and then the uppercut came. Um, I do believe that that Vince did walk in there anticipating Brett was going to punch him, but I just don't think he was that brazen with it. I think that he probably said, "Listen." I know I have to go. I know I have to go. Go confront him, I, and you know, human, human. You know, we. I, I was like a father figure to this man, so it's it's wrong if I just keep myself locked in this office. Because if you guys remember, if you watch, I don't want to make this about a Brett, uh, uh, um, a Bret Hart Montreal Screwjob video. But, you know, he tries to go to Vince's office, but Vince is locked in his office. And then from other interviews, we hear that The Undertaker went over to Vince's office and said, no, you better go out and talk to this man. They left all of that out conveniently, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm not mad at that. But um, anyway, but from there, when we can go on to episode four, we get into the Attitude Era now. And, you know, they they talk about, 83 weeks they're behind WCW and you know Ted Turner's really killing them so on and so forth but from the Montreal screw job birthed the Vince McMahon character because he came out thought he was going to be cheered he thought he was going to be the baby face and everybody just booed him and they just went with it so in essence you think about it Without the Montreal screw job, there is no Mr. McMahon character. And uh, one thing that I laughed about, that I liked actually, but I did laugh about, was when Eric Bischoff pointed out that he was doing it first, which he was. <laughs> he definitely was. Easy E. He definitely was the uh, the heel boss. But what Eric was also saying is that, or hinted, was that they may have gotten that from them. which. I can see why he would say that, but this one seemed to be more authentic because it was a real issue that happened to have a whole bunch of cameras following it and that captured it. So the fact that we all knew that and we all were exposed to that, there's no way in the world that Vince is going to come out and we're going to like him. So if we're booing him, you know, throwing children in the air and, and, and trash at him, you know, hypothetically, and they say, well, you know, that's a reaction. We're just going to go for it. So, bam, there you go, Mr. McMahon. And who else better to feud with than Stone Cold Steve Austin, i.e. the Attitude Era, which, you know, like a lot of a lot of the um, excerpts that uh, that people were saying in interviews when you got to episode four was this is how TV was. And it's, and it's true. Uh, you know, the Jerry Springer show was real huge in the 90s. Real huge. As a matter of fact, I was in middle school when when I when I happened to stumble across a VHS tape, Jerry Springer, Too Hot for TV, and I remember bringing that to school, and everybody wanted to borrow it. But like this was what TV was like, and it's been hard to follow ever since. 
because it's not going to stay hot for long. And, you know, back then, like when they show the um, the ratings, how, how 8 to 13 million people were watching wrestling. And now you look at just what AEW is doing in ratings, like 600,000, like it's a huge jump off, you know? So, so back in that era where TV was, which, you know, you had the shock jock stuff. Like for instance, if Howard Stern does, he still does a show, but if he, back in the nineties, uh, it's when he even started in the eighties, that it was, it was something that was, you know, like they tried to caution it, but you couldn't keep your eyes off it. But like now it's just, we're kind of desensitized to, to it because we see it everywhere so now it doesn't have the same effect so now like the interest is lower but that was a good time to be a wrestling fan because everywhere you went um tj Maxx's, whatever you could buy a t-shirt an nwo t-shirt a stone cold steve Austin, and marshall's like when's the last time you saw those type of t-shirts or 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 you know wrestling paraphernalia in in the marshals in the tj max and you know in those type of stores it was that popular back then i miss it because everybody knew what suck it was everybody knew what too sweet everybody was doing it it's interesting time um episode five goes into um the ruthless aggression era and and in the in the in the different um the different eras um you know, that's when we get more of Shane. We get more of um, Stephanie McMahon, who's aging like fine wine, I must say. And I really didn't didn't take a notice of it. I know my esteemed colleague, Joey Business, is really big on Stephanie. But, you know, they show her when she starts. And I like, guess yeah, she definitely looks like a child. And then, like, like now, I'm like, yeah, you know, Stephanie, yeah, you know, aging like fine wine. I say that about a lot of other wrestlers that are aging like milk, but still, you know, I got nothing against you. I love you all. Love you all. But um, episode five was was really was really 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 good. Um, yep, Linda McMahon, um, Trish Stratus. I forgot about that whole story. Who forgot that Trish Stratus was the mistress? Thank you, Trish. By the way, thank you. <laughs> uh episode six uh i talked about earlier um you know the one without vince um six episodes man really 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 good uh one thing i do want to point out to hulk hogan you a snitch man and i understand why jesse the body ventura didn't like you but you know hulk hogan man telling vince that you know hey the boys are gonna unionize <laughs> I mean, hey, Hulk, Hulkster, you're a snitch, man. You're a snitch. The boys could have used the union, but whatever. Um, I think I ran it on this thing long enough. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Vince McMahon, Mr. McMahon, it is, it is, it is a great watch. Like I said, each episode is about an hour long. I wish I would have learned more about Vince the man, you know. What does he do when he's not working? Because everyone is always claiming that he's always working. You know, like, hey, um, what kind of snacks do, do, does he eat? You know, like, let's talk about something else. You know, I know um, that he, he has he has a sibling or he has a brother that just passed away. There was, there was no mention or reference to any of that. You know, like, like those are, those are some of the things that, that I would have loved to know. You know, kind of humanize them a little bit more is the only um, criticism I have. But like it, it's a it's a low tier criticism because the these were really great episodes, fantastic episodes, and I encourage you all to watch them. So, thank you for listening to my diatribe, and until the next time, go back and watch all of our content. Because we love our supporters. Get abreast with it because more of these tangents are coming. Donnie Wonderful, signing off.